guys, Motorcycle Scientist here. Today we're going to be taking gallium metal and putting it in this motorcycle's engine. We're going to drive around and see how long the engine lasts before it just totally tears itself apart. I forgot I need to show you guys how we're going to do this. So you've seen me use gallium in past videos. It weakens the aluminum structure so much that the aluminum just is so brittle you can break it with your hands. So we're going to try two things with the motorcycle. We're going to try putting it in the engine oil down here, just right in the engine oil, and we're also going to try putting it right up here on the top of the engine, right in this little indent where the spark plug is. So now let's load this pony up. We are on our way to the motorcycle testing ground. Riley, what does the map say? Where are we going? Uh, we're going to <laughs> Titty Land. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're out here at the test site, so it's time to test the myth. The first thing we're going to do is pour a little bit of gallium directly into the oil. Oh man, that was kind of a lot. And then we're going to pour the rest of the gallium right up here in the little spark plug thing. The gallium needs to come in direct contact with the aluminum, so I had to scratch away all the oxidation on the surface. So now the quest begins. What will happen to the motorcycle? Well, nothing left to do now except for ride around and enjoy the day. In my previous videos, I put gallium on bicycles, scooters, and they've all broken down in a couple of hours. But will the motorcycle suffer the same fate? I don't know, I have my doubts about the gallium in the oil tank. Gallium needs to be in direct contact with the aluminum, and the oil will probably make that impossible. But maybe the gallium will form an emulsion with the oil, and that'll make its way into a high friction area where we'll displace the oil out of the way. I'm a lot more optimistic about the gallium on top of the spark plug, though. When the engine's running, there's about 300 PSI produced by the combustion, and all those explosions is definitely enough to blow a hole in the aluminum if it's been weakened. So, back to the adventure. It's uh, still there! Let's keep riding! Alright! At this point, I've been riding around for four or five hours on the motorcycle and nothing has happened yet. Except for the mosquitoes have started coming out. <laughs> anyway, you can see that there is still gallium, but it just hasn't reacted with the motorcycle yet. So we're gonna pack this up, let it sit overnight, and then ride it around in the morning and then see what happens. Uh, spoiler alert! Nothing happened! Another day of riding it around and it never broke. So, can gallium destroy an engine? No. Myth busted. And if this was the Mythbusters right now, this is about the time when we would strap C4 onto the motorcycle and blow it up. But I don't have C4. But what I do have is... is beans. I have a can of beans. I have a beaker of beans here. The real question you should be asking yourselves is, how long can a motorcycle run if you replace the oil with baked beans? I don't think anybody has ever poured beans in an engine before. This is the kind of groundbreaking research you guys come to the backyard scientists for. How many quarts of beans does this motor take? Uh, it takes one and a half quarts of beans. That's standard viscosity. Okay. These are a little different with the bacon inside, but they should work the same. We fit as much beans as we could inside the motorcycle. There wasn't even enough space for one extra bean. All right, here we go, guys beans for the road. Tell me how long you think the motorcycle's gonna run for in the comments below. Start the timer! And we're off. Who knows what kinds of magical adventures await for us on the Bean Mobile. Beans, beans, the magical fruit. The more you eat, the more you eat. Okay, so we know what some of you guys are thinking right now. Backyard scientist, this isn't a very scientific test, is it? Because you don't have a control motorcycle with no oil and no beans. Well, let's be honest, guys. Do we really think the beans are going to make that much of a difference? <laughs> I think the beans are getting cooked on here. Should we add some of the beans we brought? You know? Just a little top up. That's, I think that's a good idea. Absolutely. Let me get some beans in the chat for the motorcycle. After a quick pit stop, we're back up and running. But for how long? I don't know, I'm not a motorcycle mechanic, but I'm still pretty sure that a motorcycle isn't supposed to be making this noise. Not long after that, we got our first warning sign and the engine was really starting to struggle. Oh, that's it. That, that has nothing? Nope, it's just a wheel. Holy moly. <laughs> All right guys, this engine is baked. We <laughs> I think it's probably fused itself together. Let me see if I can get it to turn over again. The race is on. I feel like the motor's about to blow any minute now. Let's see if I can get back to the house before that happens. There we go, 12 minutes and 43 seconds this motor ran without oil and filled with beans. What? Oh man, that sounds horrible, listen to that. We gotta get this thing back to the house. Hey, look at that. 
So Kevin, what have we learned today? I think the most valuable lesson that we learned today is that this is a really fast and efficient method of cooking baked beans on the way to your family barbecue. So what did we learn today, guys? Honestly, not much. I mean, a motorcycle can't run on beans and beans alone. We already know that. Beans are an incomplete protein source. My friend Steven and I started performing an autopsy Yay! on the motorcycle engine. Cause of death, massive bean boozle. Let's see what's behind the door. <laughs> Beans! <laughs> oh my god, it's so gross, it smells so bad. I mean, just look at all the gears on the inside. Total Beans internal in beanification. Nothing could survive this. You no know, gears look like they're in good condition. I wonder what the problem was. Maybe it was the piston? The pistons, though, this is why the engine really died. I mean, especially, look at this right here. Without enough oil in the engine, there was just a massive amount of friction between the piston and the cylinder walls, and that was the cause of that horrible screeching noise, and ultimately, the cause of death for this engine. And because we can see that no beans have actually made it anywhere inside of the engine, I think it's safe to assume that the beans literally did nothing to help this engine. I guess they didn't really hurt the engine either, but really what I'm curious about is the gallium. Why didn't the gallium work? All right, so what I have right here is the head of the engine, the cylinder heads, and this is what holds the camshafts, the valves, and the spark plug. So you can see the valves right here, and this is the spark plug where I put the gallium on it. And it's been sitting for a while now, and honestly, it's still It's still very strong, it's not gonna break, and I think it might have something to do with the alloy that this was cast from. I did put some gallium on one of the fins of the engine, and it did weaken it, but really not that much. And even if it did weaken it just a little bit, you can see when we take the spark plug out that there's just a lot of aluminum between the gallium and the inside of the engine. There's a lot of aluminum there. The spark plug still has some gallium on it, and we can prove that there was a reaction between the gallium and aluminum by putting this in the water. See those bubbles right away? The gallium aluminum alloy reacts with water to form hydrogen, aluminum oxide, and gallium. So it was reacting with the aluminum, just not enough to really damage it. So I guess my theory is that gallium is just not as effective against certain types of aluminum, and I did find some research online to back that up. So in conclusion, the best way to destroy somebody's engine... Beans!